What we were doing before Simeon was really not dissimilar to what we're doing now. It was a mixing desk and a couple of synths, a drum machine and some effects. We always had these little like jam sessions messing around, running things through a desk and pedals and all that sort of stuff. It was very much a kind of a system that you build and we'd started to kind of like get our head around it. We've got a quite weird relationship with vocals. Jas especially doesn't really like them at all. <laughs> I obviously work with them quite a lot in singer-songwriter affair, so I don't mind the human voice so much, but Jas like, literally would never buy a record if it's got a voice on it. We'd make these tracks and be really happy with them, and then we'd put vocals in, and they just stick out. They just wouldn't work. And it wasn't the vocals were bad, they just didn't, they didn't connect with the music. We had to ditch that kind of producer thing of making the vocals sound great, because it wasn't about making the vocals sound great, it was about making a track. And in order to do that, you had to be unkind to the vocals. And it's something that we certainly took with us into murmurations. The idea of the choir thing came to me because one of my friends actually sings in the choir and I saw them at a local thing. That was at the time that we were actually having this conversation about how we could possibly involve vocals. And then it was just like, ah, oh, that could be a really interesting way where it's not about one person sort of singing a, a melody. It's more about a group and all the textures and the different ways that you can use voices. And we really were interested in the ideas that that, that threw up. Like going between an O shape and an R shape. So like O is like quiet and like filtered down and then open up to like a louder R shape. A choir is not an obvious choice for us. But once you took the fact they're a choir off the table, they made complete sense. And when you put the fact they're a choir back on, you go, okay, well, we're going to do a record with a choir. Let's see what happens. I think the way that we treat the voice in the choir is kind of as an instrument. It's often allowing the voice to take on parts that maybe a guitar would play or like something quite percussive. It fills in all of that space and so it's normal for us to have something that's very textural and rhythmic and works with the music in the way that an instrument might more readily work. It's a huge difference in how, how you engage with that vocal. It's a huge difference actually in terms of how you engage with lyrics because a single person singing some lyrics means an enormously different thing to a group of people singing the lyrics. It kind of addressed a lot of the issues that I sometimes have with vocals. I will protect you, stand in the way. I'm a defender, come what may. Do as you please to us, see that you do. Of other 
the voices in, it kind of elevates it. Not only sonically does it sound like bigger and more powerful, but it also in terms of the meaning of those words and how that melody or the lyric feels when it's carried by a group of people, it suddenly becomes like a, a communal sentiment. Really, for me, the record appeared when we started doing the unplanned stuff. The little kind of magical things that only happen once and you go, how did that happen, you know? And there was so much of that. We recorded the lyric and the melody that myself and Eloise had written, but there was a lot of time where we would sort of just ruminate in the chords that those songs were in. You'd ask them to do something absolutely non choirish and they just do it. They were like, yeah, we can do that. We can just swoop up and down or, you know, make whooshing noises or whatever. <laughs> don't worry about notes. Yeah. Really, don't worry about what notes they are. Okay. Yeah, post notes. Yeah, post notes. <laughs> It was not really important that any one of them was in tune. It was important that they were listening to each other because it's the process of them hearing their neighbour like change note or something and them just naturally harmonising with that person. And so when they were doing these kind of procedural things, the sort of natural musicality of the choir just kind of came out. It created these amazing sort of like a, a pad that was like consonant and then it had sort of split apart and drift into this sometimes quite dissonant or sometimes really beautiful and they'd like all change chord and but like it was improvised and to improvise with that amount of people is, is really hard and weird thing to do you know and me and Jas were really blown away by that. And that's where the name of the record came from because James and I were sat in the control room and we were talking about how it's like how flocks of birds move. People have tried to model it with like computer simulations where one unit, one bird, will have a simple rule to stay a certain distance from its neighbour to the right and then that creates these patterns. And that whole idea is like the kind of key to the to the album for us. You know, that was like the, the the theme that we that we grasped onto. That was where like it started to become chaotic in a beautiful way, and that does relate really strongly back to programming. has a real link to the way that we make music with synths because for instance with a sequencer you make a really simple three note sequence but then you add another sequence that affects that or two or three of those going together and you suddenly get this really complicated melody that you never would have sat and written. All of a sudden it was like I can see like this and a synth can speak to each other. It can form its own little universe you know, to see that happening live with a bunch of people in a room was just like, wow, this really works, this really links in together, you know, so we were really excited when that particular element happened. We have always wanted each live show to be as live as it can possibly be, you know, and we, we sort of thought no one would care or notice even, but I think it gave the live show an extra dimension and made it more sort of different every night and more organic and, and I suppose, you know, the Barbican show is, is kind of the culmination of all of that, then plus a load of other random elements that we can't control. And then there's also the visuals, which is a ludicrously Heath Robinson set up. I think it might even be more risky than our stuff. 
It is probably the most complicated, technically extravagant, insane setup I've ever worked with and maybe will ever work with. Chris Parks is an artist and scientist who is able to mix fluids, pigments, chemicals and substances at a microscopic scale and create very, very tiny fluid events, which when viewed through very, very scientifically advanced long lenses, appear as if they're taking place over vast expanses of space. What I've seen of it so far, just it looks like galaxies exploding or, you know, sort of cells multiplying. It's pretty amazing stuff. This setup of very, very complicated cameras and dishes had to remain in his studio. So we had to figure out a way to transmit what we were doing into the Barbican during the show. If you were to draw a diagram with the communication lines, it's a spaghetti tangle of Skype, telephonic, um, T-Vips, high-speed feeds, splits, like you would never imagine. We're dealing with fluids and physics at a microscopic level, and so there really is no predicting what could happen tonight. We can do our best to control it, but um, we're in the hands of the gods. I think the, the energy of something being actually created on stage for the first time and maybe the only time has, has an indefinable energy that, that, that translates, I, I hope. And this show has got more moving parts and things that could go wrong than anything we've ever done, so hopefully it'll be a good one or it'll be a disaster. So having the choir back in and bringing that right round again and them kind of learning their own improvisations there was a sort of symmetry and a really nice conclusion to the process that we had gone on with them. I'm hoping it might be better than the record.